Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be finding the cosine of a complex number. How exciting that can get, right? So we have 1 minus i which is a complex number and we're going to cosine it. We're going to find the cosine of a complex number. Well, finding the cosine of a complex number can be done if you are familiar with basics of complex numbers. If you're not, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I made a bunch of videos on the basics of complex numbers. And if you like number theory, algebra, I'm pretty sure you do, and trigonometry, a tiny bit of geometry, go ahead and check out CyberMath, my other channel, my first channel, Cyber with an S. So let's go ahead and proceed with the cosine of a complex number. First of all, a complex number can be written in many different ways. One of them is the standard form, which is a plus bi. Another one is the polar form, which is r times e to the i theta. In a nutshell, basically that's what complex numbers are. This is the modulus or the absolute value of a complex number. Okay, And theta is considered the argument or the angle of the complex number. So, you can t write them in many forms, depending on, you know, whichever one is more helpful. But that's basically, in a nutshell, what it is. So, how do you find the cosine of a complex number? There's obviously a couple different ways to approach this problem, right? First of all, we could consider the cosine of the difference of two angles, like cosine of alpha minus beta. Do you know that formula? I hope you do. And if not, here's the formula for you. One thing to remember, with cosine formulas are kind of homogeneous, which means it's going to bring in, uh, bring together the same kind of trigonometric functions like cosine, cosine, and sine, sine. I want you to kind of remember that maybe like, a, I don't know, just keep saying it to yourself until this becomes automatic. But cosine formulas are usually cosine, cosine, and sine formulas are usually sine, cosine, sine, cosine. Okay? Just try to remember that. Uh, so in this case, we'll get cosine alpha, cosine beta. And of course, uh, cosine is kind of uh, opposite sine. Uh, so it's the opposite of sine, sort of, right? So minus will turn into a plus sign. So that's one way to uh, easily remember these formulas because you've got to memorize these and there's tons of them. But there's a pattern, obviously. So that's the cosine of alpha minus beta. So if we apply to our scenario, which is 1 minus i, so alpha becomes 1. By the way, we're kind of dealing with this in radians, right? Most of the time, we want it to be radians. We're going to get cosine of 1 multiplied by cosine of i plus, don't forget the sine will change, sine of 1 and sine of i. If you want to use parentheses, be my guest. I mean, I usually don't. It's usually understood. If you don't want to write it like, what is cosine? <laughs> it's not cosine. It's cosine of i. It's usually understood, but if you're really particular and picky, uh, like, you know, notation please, um, then you can write them. Most of the time I don't. But, so that's what it is. Okay, great. Is that an improvement? Sort of, if you know what cosine i is, right? So we kind of know hmm, cosine i comes up in some scenarios. Okay, one thing to remember here is if you don't know cosine i and sine i, you'll be stuck, okay? So you kind of need to do something about this. So let's go ahead and talk about how we can proceed with this. First of all, I'm going to give you a formula, Euler's formula. Euler's formula is actually amazing because he was able to connect so many different fields together and that gave us the, the beautiful equation in math, okay? So e to the power i theta can be written as cosine theta plus i sine theta, okay? So this is an amazing formula because you know what? You can replace theta with even complex numbers. That's the greatest part of this. This is this works with complex numbers too. Well, what happens if theta is a complex number? Of course, that's a really good question. So instead of trying to substitute theta with what it is, let's just go ahead and focus on this. We do need the cosine of one and cosine of i, and then we need to we need the sine of 1 and sine of i. So why don't we come up with formulas for sine and cosine from here? Can we? We only have one equation. Well, hocus pocus, math and magic, we can come up with another one. Le replace, replace, replace theta with negative theta, and you're going to get cosine of negative theta, which is the same as cosine theta, but sine of negative theta would be negative sine of theta. So that's another formula for you. And if you kind of add these two together, sine mysteriously, mathematically cancels out, leaving us with this. 2 cosine theta equals e to the i theta plus e to the negative i theta. Now, another 
miracle or mathematic happens when you divide both sides by two, you get the formula for cosine. Isn't that amazing? This is the cosine in terms of exponentials. It's beautiful because you can express cosine of an angle as an exponential, which you can directly evaluate. You can't just find, okay, what is cosine of I? I have no idea. What is cosine of 30 degrees? Root three over two. What is cosine of 60? One half. Great. But what is cosine of pi? Negative one. But I can't find cosine of I like that, right? Because it's not a special angle. It's actually a special angle, but a too special of an angle. So we can use this formula. Similarly, you can come up with the sine theta formula. If you subtract this and divide by two, to keep a long story short, I know some people don't like long explanations, but some people like long explanations. So how do you strike a balance? I try to strike a balance. Okay, whatever. So this is the sine theta, and I know I forgot something. I'm going to write it down now, 2i. Because when you subtract, you have an i, you have to divide by 2i. Make sense? Okay. So that's the difference. And of course, from here, you can find secant theta, tangent theta, whatever you like. Okay, cosine 2 theta, obviously you wouldn't use this to cosine theta, 2 theta because just replace theta with 2 theta. But that can be used to prove a lot of trigonometric identities. You can find a formula of cosine 5 theta, 4 theta, 11 theta, whatever you like. Okay, now we have the formulas, we can just plug them in, right? Okay, well, maybe yes, maybe no. You know what? Because look, this is the cosine of a complex number. So we only have a single cosine. Here we have two cosines and two sines. Why would you make your life much, much harder? Well, because it's the first method, right? But guess what? There's an easy way to do it, so why not directly do that? Let's do it, okay. You already got the idea, and I, I think you've seen enough, uh, and you've suffered enough to deserve to hear the second method, okay? Second method, uh, we all, we're only gonna use the first formula, cosine, and you can obviously test uh, this one as well and see if you can get the same answer. That would be a good exercise, which is left for the reader or the, for the watcher or for the viewers, for the subscribers, for everyone in the world, okay? Anyone can do it. So now I'm going to plug in and let me copy the formula here for your uh, reference in case you forgot it. Hey, did you? Don't forget it. Just keep writing it a thousand times, 10,000 times, repeat it. Hopefully you'll remember that. Okay, now... We're going to replace theta with 1 minus i, okay? So let's do it everywhere. So cosine of 1 minus i will be e to the power i times 1 minus i plus e to the power negative i times 1 minus i. All of that is divided by 2. Beautiful. Now, we can totally forget about this cosine nonsense and focus on the exponential because Euler, you know, e is Euler's number. Euler is awesome. That's why... He came up with these formulas. Imagine if he lived today and what would he come up with, right? Anyways, so if you go ahead and distribute that, you should be getting something like this. e to the power i minus i squared. Oh, I forgot to say. i squared is negative 1 because i is the square root of negative 1. Again, th these are all covered in the lecture videos. Go ahead and check them out. And let me know what you think. Ask questions. So e to the power i minus i squared. i squared is negative 1, so it's going to be e to the power i plus 1. Just remember that this is the opposite, so it's going to be e to the power negative i minus 1. Of course, there's a better way to write it in a more standard form, but don't worry too much about it. So here's what we can do. We can actually come up with um, some type of common denominator, but what do I mean by that? We can actually write it this way, e to the power 1 plus i, and this is the opposite of 1 plus i, so I can write it as a reciprocal, and all of that is divided by 2. And now we can go ahead and Kind of you know make a common denominator e to the power 2 plus 2i plus 1 divided by 2 times e to the power 1 plus i i don't know if i should be doing this but anyways i wanted to show you there's a couple different ways to do it now how do you deal with that though you leave it at that well what is e to the power i again this formula comes in handy this is remember cosine theta plus i sine theta so when you get something like e to the power 2 plus 2i uh oh I don't have something i. Well, don't worry, we can do that. We can write this as e to the second power times e to the power 2i plus 1 divided by 2 times e to the power 1 times e to the power i. So all you have to deal with now is this one and this one. And they can be done because now you know the theta is 2 and the theta is 1 here. You get it? So it's going to look like this. Of course, e squared is a real number. We don't have to worry about it. But e squared will be multiplied by cosine of 2 plus i sine of 
2. And now you're going to add 1 to it. And all of that is divided by 2e multiplied by cosine of 1 plus i times sine of 1. If you want to do the conjugacy, blah, blah, so on and so forth, you can do that. But I would just leave it at that. This is fine. You can evaluate it, plug it in, and guess what? At the end, you get a complex number like a plus bi. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. Don't forget to check out CyberMath and A plus BI. And bye-bye.